do you think that female models and male models should be paid the same by law? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we should make female actresses and models pay, be paid less because they get they earn about 20 times more than men. I think when so you get to... women would get a pay cut. You're okay I think with that? There's no incentive for women to behave well through the course of a divorce at all, the way the laws are written. Legal professionals that I've talked to in the past will tell you flat out, you do not want to go to court. You want to try to resolve this out of court because if you have a penis, you're going to lose. When things like parental alienation get very bad, what usually ends up happening is if the guy is lucky, he might get to see his kids and he gets to see how effective his ex-wife is at brainwashing his kids into hating him and taking all of his money and doing whatever she wants with it and he has no say. Until someone stops the free reign of the family court, men will avoid marriage and women in general. Nowadays, only 6.5 men in a thousand get married due to the following scenario. Man gets married, or wife refuses to have sex, or wife racks up huge credit card debt, or wife stops contributing financially, or wife stops cooking and cleaning, or wife cheats on husband, or wife files for divorce and takes the house, cars, savings, and kids or wife falsely accuses husband of abuse and he no longer can see his kids, or wife poisons kids against the father. What man in his right mind will sign up for this? I don't have to do, uh, you know, the adult content. Well, the thing is I wouldn't have to do it. That would be great, but I would still want to do it. I am I mean, personally, like, I'm an exhibitionist. I love, like, putting my sexual self out there for other people to see, for other people to, like, you know, touch themselves to, have fun with. Huh? Can I, I love, can I ask I you a, a question? Since you're about presenting yourself to the world, do you have a good relationship with your father? <laughs> here <we go. laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> no, I don't talk to him. I, I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that coming a mile away. Did be dead! Daddy didn't love me! And just to be clear, no woman was forced to go as far as they have. Women chose to go as far as they could by their own choice. Women have forced men away from them by their own actions. Now women are complaining about getting exactly what they want and deserve. Take responsibility and accountability for your own behavior and actions. Stop blaming others for your behavior. But I was just saying that the, man the manipulation part and like the entitlement that you felt in that video, just because a woman doesn't want to have sex with you, a cup. The audacity, you have to punish her. You have to play these manipulative, so those manipulative games. Like why, the, 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 what you said in the video that you feel entitled to having sex to, to, um, sorry, that, that you feel like there should be consequences to the fact that she doesn't want to have sex with yes, you. Yes, there are consequences. What's wrong with that? She no longer gets my attention. The absence of a connection between men and women, as well as movements like men going their way, which essentially promotes men to conduct their lives without women, are two of the most significant reasons why there is a drop in men's intimacy in marriages throughout time. Additionally, Feminist awakened women share this broad view that they do not require a guy in order to fulfill their lives. Let's say you had a daughter and she wanted to marry a homeless guy. Would you give him a chance? Would you want to meet him and talk to him? Well, that's different because he has no money, but the girl's going to have money if she's doing OnlyFans, so at least she can, like. Well, what if contribute. I told you a woman's sexuality is the equivalent to a man's status and money? So if a girl's out mm. there giving it for free. That's your opinion, but internet, it's not mine, so that's okay. It's not about an opinion, it's about how the genders objectively look at each other but i don't agree that's just not i my, mean this is not my philosophy like but it's it's biological fact though like i don't see it as equal men or women aren't equal that's what i'm trying to illustrate here yeah but you just said it was equal you said sexuality is equal it's to a functional money. equivalent that's why i had to switch yeah, the scenario so you agree. can understand i just don't agree with that i found it interesting that you would go ahead and give a only sex worker the benefit of the doubt and give her an opportunity to prove herself but if i took the same situation i said okay for your daughter what if she was with a homeless guy? You said no, I wouldn't even give him a chance. Can I ask something? Hold on. So, <laughs> I don't understand, like... According to a study, women no longer feel as much of a need to be with males as they once did, as they become more financially independent. Therefore, the reduction in men's intimate behavior comes as no surprise. In addition, I'm convinced that when new groups and ideas emerge, things will only become worse, and the gender gap will widen over time. So women are not forced to conform to what men want because we'll get the attention anyways. And there's evidence that suggests that 50% of women are never going to have kids or get married. 
And then you take the women that do get married, 50% of them will divorce. And that's by 2030, so it's not even that far away. So, like, if we take this room, for example, how many girls are there in this room? Two, four, six, seven. At least, at least, if let's make it nicer than it is, at least three of us will never get married and never have kids. And that's a But overall, if there's one thing that women need to do to have better and healthier marriages, it's to not hold back on intimacy without any legitimate reasons, because intimacy is a primary part of the commitment they have with their partners, and the same rule applies to them. We are all aware that marriages typically lose their allure and worth with time. Men have grown weary of women as more and more of them reveal their true natures, and how they trick them into marriages so they may live off of their resources while they monkey branch from one male to the next. However, the fundamental reason marriages are becoming less intimate is that women no longer want to be women. There, I did say it. Based on falsehoods spread by the awakened feminist ideology, women seek to adopt the gender role of males and want to behave masculinely to seize the leadership. I just think marriage is an L. In today's day and age, I mean, there's obviously the tradition component if you're, if you're religious, but um, you know, when it comes to the government involvement and the potential uh, um, financial ramifications of having to unwind a marriage, it's just, it does not make sense. Uh, so, don't get married, guys. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> you do, uh, but you could have a life partner, for example, but you just don't want, you don't need the government involved exactly in that. Exactly right, yeah. Okay. And uh, fully Based. wants the whole white picket fence. We are husband and wife, but I just don't feel the need to go and sign some paper that mm. lets them know that we are. Yep. The notion of a flawless marriage or relationship is a myth. There's no set formula for success. What works for one couple may not work for another. Yet, I've discovered that there's always a way forward, even in the most challenging times. Five years ago, my wife and I encountered significant hurdles in our marriage that nearly led to divorce. Despite the adversity, we managed to weather the storm and emerge from it with our bond renewed and revitalized. There's one powerful reason why women love marriage, and that reason is divorce. With your sameness and fairness thing, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, it kind of sounds to me like you want equality as long as it's benefiting women, but when it's not benefiting women and men can take the brunt of it, you're like, that's cool. Like, I'm fine with that. Yeah, how do you see that? How well, you I mean, if, you know, if we lived in like a properly feminist world, uh -huh. there wouldn't be affirmative action initiatives to mm -hmm. put more women in positions of like workplace positions mm -hmm. and in academic positions. If we had a truly equal world, women, like I said, would get drafted into the military. Like, I think if feminists want to truly fight for equality, it's like, put your money where your mouth is. But if you only want equality when it's benefiting you, then it's not, you don't actually want equality, you just want a world that benefits women more often. Uh the whole life partner thing is a nice idea, but even without a formal contract with the government involved, aka marriage license, the pitfall is that being together constitutes a common law marriage. How do you get around that? I'm not going to thank my husband for putting a new trash bag into the trash can. I'm not going to thank him for putting his clothes in the hamper. I'm not going to thank him for unloading the dishwasher. I'm not going to thank him for changing the diaper. I'm not going to thank him for cleaning a toilet. I'm not going to thank him for making the bed. I'm not going to thank him for doing any of the things that just come with living in a house. Like, if he would have to do it, if I didn't live here, like if he lived by himself and that was still a required task, I'm not saying thank you. That is just part of existing in a functioning home. I'm not sure where this line of thought came from, that if we say thank you or show any type of gratitude, that we are enabling lazy men and that we will end up receiving less. Ladies, that is not how men work. And could you imagine if a man took the same line of thought and he decided he would no longer praise you for caring for your children? for making dinner or for doing housework. Men are results driven, which is why gratitude, even for the small things, goes a long way. A guy I knew lived with his GF, and he told me that he had to break up with her because they were together for almost seven years. He was afraid that the government was going to view their relationship as a common law marriage, and he had gone through a divorce when he was younger. He figured that he'd break up with her for a while and then get back with her at a later date to start over. It ended up a moot point because a year later, they got married and stayed that way until he passed away. Many causes, according to experts who research American intimate practices, are to blame for the great American love drought. One of them is age. According to the report, the population aged 60 and over-increased from 18% in 1996 
to 26% in 2018. The percentage of people who say they have never had intercourse has constantly been about 50%, and because that age group is getting older in comparison to everyone else, it has the overall impact of making it less likely for people to have intimate activity. Serious relationships such as marriages are actual commitments that are to be honored, and that's something that most women need to understand. If you are in a married or committed relationship with a man, you should not be withholding intimacy from him for no reason. One of the main reasons why there are more marriages without intimacy today is that men's careers and responsibilities are frequently all-consuming in midlife. If their romantic life needs to be revived, it frequently involves a struggle against an ongoing effort to uphold their status and way of life. The absence of a satisfying intimate relationship weighs heavily since, in the end, it is what gives our lives purpose. If people were asked about their greatest regrets at the end of their lives, they were invariable. I wish I had spent more time with my family, my husband. I wish I paid more attention to human connection. The negative aspect of this worry is that these men frequently don't pay attention to it. They are thinking about what it implies for their marriage while fantasizing about other women or viewing explicit videos online. It's okay if a woman just had a baby or is going through postpartum or she might have some serious problems going on with her man, those are legitimate reasons. If the roles were reversed, and if the man did something like that, women would raise hell. They would come out on the streets to protest. They would call the lawyer and bring the might of the justice system to teach that guy a lesson. And there's another thing that comes to mind if a woman is not giving it to her own man, who's she giving it to instead? After many years of being with their partner, men can feel dejected if their intimate life has dwindled. But they shouldn't. That's another reason. Even the finest of us, and most of us, experience it. It doesn't necessarily mean there's an issue. It's a typical progression in committed relationships. It's also common to struggle to find a solution. According to an article in The New Yorker, sociologists who doubt the idea that loneliness is an increasing issue contend that a large portion of modern solitude is a contented state of affairs. A study that was conducted at a leading U.S. university explored the area of online dating as well as dating in the world after the coronavirus. It stated that with more and more men who are not experiencing intimacy, especially those who are categorized between the ages of 19 and 30, there's going to be a whole generation of men who will not treat women favorably. This will lead to numerous extremist ideologies, some of which we are currently seeing even today. These ideologies are further going to deepen the divide between the genders and the subgroups that have formed within these genders over the last decade. What happens now is only up to the men and women who are the real players in the dating game. If more guys can see this from a bigger perspective and pursue more women without hating on them, and if women understand where men are coming from and give them a chance, we might have a sense of normalcy in how the future of dating plays out. It's important to understand that women don't really respond to your overall profile in online dating. They'll respond if you tick all the boxes they have for the sort of guys they're seeking. Thanks for watching The Circle of Kings. As always, we're looking forward to your support, so please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything all kings like yourself need to know.